In February 2015, firefighters from Austin, Texas and Boise, Idaho met in Austin to exchange information and best practices related to helping their communities become more fire adapted. A fire adapted community in my mind is, is a community that um, really understands that they have, you know, put themselves in a place uh, in a fire prone ecosystem. Um, they've, you know, the community itself that has moved into that ecosystem needs to understand that, that, they, uh, that they chose to do that and that they need to learn to live with fire. Fire is a natural part of the ecosystem. We're really excited today because we're hosting an exchange with one of our partner departments, uh, the Boise Fire Department and their Wildland Division. And they're here to um, interact and spend time with Austin Fire Department. Um, we're here to learn from them and they're here to learn from us. And in reciprocation, um, we're gonna take a trip to Boise and learn how they address their wildland urban interface because we're all facing unique challenges, but we're also facing a similar threat that wildfire poses to our communities at risk. The exchange was sponsored by the Fire Adapted Communities Learning Network which connects people and projects to share knowledge and advice, feedback, and resources. Unfortunately for the Boise Fire Department, there was a few, uh, I would say, catalyst fire events that really got the ball ro rolling, and unfortunately that's what it took. But, you know, I look at it, Josh and I were having this discussion today, some of the fires that he and I have been on that were large, large losses. Tr we truly believe today if we had those same fires, they would not look the same because of the work that we've done since. Whether it be our integration with training, whether it would be our fuels management, um, our mitigation efforts, education, all those things that we have done since in that short period of time, we're set up for success now. The way the city of Boise decided to go about that is um, creating an interdepartmental wildfire mitigation team. Uh, that was first and foremost. So that included myself, it included um, the foothills and open space manager with the Boise Parks Department included a comp planner with city planning development services and included a uh, soil and erosion specialist with public works. And so um, we worked together as a, as a city team, a wildfire mitigation team. And then from there, we reach out to our area partners and stakeholders and, and bring other folks to the table. Living with wildfires involves three goals restore and maintain resilient landscapes, prepare communities so they can live with and withstand a wildfire without loss of life and property, and effectively respond to wildfires when they happen. It isn't just that we're going to burn some grass because we're going to make this field safer. You know, it's no, we're trying to restore, you know, resilient <laughs> ecosystems, uh, and this is how you do it. And while we're doing that, you know, it, it, you know, it encompasses so many different factors. It makes us safer, uh, you know, so when the fire does occur, it's a lot less intense and we can manage it and we can attack that fire. Because as we see it now in a lot of these landscapes when we have wildfires, when they do occur, what are we seeing? Well, they're super intense, right? Super high flame lengths. We can't engage those. We're having to sit back, um, by, by, but by treating it, you know, we're able to, uh, you know, better manage the wildfires when they do occur. And we're restoring natural ecosystems, which is what needs to happen. Our goal is to burn frequently and burn small. Don't put up too much smoke. We stay in touch with the adjacent property owners. Literally, we're having a across the fence conversation. You can see the fences right there where we've been out here working and we've had homeowners come out who are curious about what they've had. It's a great neighborhood. A lot of the houses in part are part of our FireWise, one of our more active FireWise communities. And we've gotten to talk to them and they, they explain to us their understanding. We've been able to educate them more. Sometimes they have a great knowledge and they've been able to share. And We've talked about what they were planning to do on their actual property as well as what we're doing here. And even the people when we, who knew about FireWise Principal in this neighborhood it's, itself, they were worried about what it was going to look like because they, they live out here because they, they love nature. And they're like, no, don't take nature away. And now they're seeing that not only is it protecting their house and property from potential wildfires, but it's increasing the property values because now you're not next to a decadent, thick mass of wooded things that, well, hey, it's nature and that's cool. But now you can see into it and you actually start to see the life and activity that's in all our wildlands. 
Well, I think maybe one of the values of um, especially this and other efforts like it of keeping fire on the, on the ground under conditions other than extreme is it busts the myth that um, wildfires are always this mm -hmm. big monster that's coming to get you and the reality is they're a component of our ecosystem. I mean, there's a range of um, intensities that um, we can experience based on our management practices um, as much as the, the nature of fire being an integral component of these ecosystems. And so it, it kind of levels that playing field and demystifies that fire is only a um, big bad thing when in reality it's just a part of the, the environment we live in. The fire culture is based on uh, learning from past mistakes or learning lessons from the past. And so uh, firefighters naturally want to share the stories that happened to them last week or last year so that their brothers and sisters don't repeat those potential mistakes in the future. And so when you bring a group of firefighters together, they're going to walk away better for hearing the stories of their colleagues because their colleagues are experiencing different situations than they are and so there's a lot of cross learning that happens. In the past, you know, we've got plenty of stories of firefighters trying to drive, you know, type one engines out into a field to run down some grass fire. You know, it doesn't need to occur. You know, stories of even taking type sixes just bailing off into the brush to try to chase down this fire. It doesn't have to happen. You know, and so um, we've made a lot of progress with our firefighters now being able to appreciate fire behavior, be able to see fire behavior, and to adjust uh, much more appropriate and, and safe tactics. We've had enormous successes in the last uh, six, seven years. I mean, monumental cultural changes from when I first came on in the valley to where we are now. And literally, if it continues to trend like this 10 years from now, it'll be a seamless seamless integration between all of these issues and stakeholders, agencies, they'll just be one big system. And uh, I'm very proud of that and I'm very proud of the fact that I've seen where it was to where it is now and when I do leave I'll, I'll feel like I was a part of that. Fire departments across the country are adapting and stepping up to the challenges posed by a growing wildland urban interface. Through collaboration and proactive public outreach, firefighters are playing a vital role in helping their communities live with fire. Learn how to make your community more fire adapted.